Today we're going to apply what we know about perimeter and what we know about multi-step equations in order to solve for unknown variables within perimeter problems. In order to understand perimeter, let's do a little review. The perimeter of any closed geometric object is the measure of the outer boundary of the object. So one way to think of the perimeter is the outer boundary, the outer shading, the outer line of any geometric shape. You can also think of the perimeter as the sum of all sides of a closed geometric object. In most, math, most mathematical cases, this is what we're asking for, is the measurement of this outer boundary. So if I add all these up, 7 plus 8 is 15, 15 plus 8 is 23 centimeters. The unit of your perimeter is the same unit as all the sides of the triangle. From a more real-world stance, we can think of the Think of the perimeter as the path around a closed geometric object. So this is if I physically walked all the way around this triangle, that would be the perimeter. You could look at it as the measure of how far you walked. You could look at it as how much material you need to build a perimeter around something, such as a garden using fencing or bushes in this case. These are common real-world applications or world pr word problem applications for the perimeter of a triangle. However, what if you aren't given exact values for all sides of the triangle? In this case, all three sides are represented by algebraic expressions, and we're given the perimeter. So we need to know, use our basic knowledge of the perimeter. Perimeter formula is all three sides added together equals the perimeter. So I'm going to take each of my sides, even though they're algebraic expressions, add them together, and set them equal to our, our, our given perimeter. So x plus 5, 2x plus 3, and 3x all added together. This makes one big algebraic expression that represents the distance or the perimeter all the way around this triangle. If I know that in centimeters that perimeter is 50, I now have a multi-step equation. In order to solve a multi-step equation, I need to try to combine like terms on both sides of the equation, get all my variables on one side, and start by distributing, but there aren't any distribution uh, opportunities in this case. So I'm just going to combine like terms. x, 2x, and 3x. Those are my sets of variables. I'm going to categorize all of my terms, all my like terms. I know that x, 2x, and 3x go together because they're all sets of x. This is just like last names. Last names are related. They go together. Then I have my constants, 5 and 3. Constants are always like terms. They always combine. So I can add up those uh, given terms x plus 2x plus 3x is 6x, 5 plus 3 is 8, and that still equals 50. This is a two-step equation now. I turn something I may not have recognized, a multi-step equation, into something I do recognize, a two-step equation. I need to ask myself one or two very important questions. What's happening to my variable and how do I undo that? With a two-step equation, it's a two-step process. I need to list off the operations that are happening in the order of operations. So this, out, this variable is being multiplied by 6, and then we're adding 8. So we need to do that in the opposite direction. We need to use my inverse operations in the inverse order. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, then I'm going to divide by 6. These are the inverse operations in the inverse order. 50, divide, or 50 minus 8 gives me 42. 6x plus 8 minus 8 gives me just 6x. 8 minus 8 gives me my identity of 0, which is the identity for addition subtraction. That's our way of knowing that that 8 cancels. Always double check that the operation you're using creates the identity. Otherwise, we aren't pulling things away. Otherwise, we aren't ripping back the layers of the onion to get this variable by itself. Now I'm going to divide by 6. That's the only operation left, so I'm going to use its inverse division. 6 divided by 6 gives me 1, so that's 1x. 42 divided by 6 equals 7, so x equals 7. Be very careful in this case. We solved for x. This does not tell us the length of any side. This does not tell us the perimeter, which we were already given. Instead, it tells us part of, the ver or part of each of the algebraic expressions that represents the sides of this triangle. In order to find the measurement of each side, I can take the algebraic expression and substitute in 7 for x. 
So 2 times 7 plus 3. Now it's just an order of operations problem or a quick calculator moment. 2 times 7 is 14. 14 plus 3 is 17 centimeters. I'm going to take my next algebraic expression. x plus 5. 7 plus 5 gives me 12 centimeters. Last but not least, 3x. That's 3 times 7, which is 21 centimeters. If I wanted to double check this, 17 plus 12 plus 21 does equal 50 centimeters. So my perimeter ends up adding up. You can see two types of questions with a problem like this. One, they may ask you to solve for x. In this case, the answer would be x equals 7. In other cases, they may ask you to solve for each of the individual sides. During those problems, or to solve those problems, we need to solve for x and then substitute in for all three of the sides, just like we did. On your own, try these two triangles. Solve for x and tell me the length of each of the three sides that are labeled. 